Uh, this will be the perfect excuse to exterminate enormous number of cows, totally decimate the beef and dairy industries, and force us into this nightmarish future of laboratory-created meat, uh, fake meat, chemicals, etc. So all these things, I, I don't think you can understand what they're doing with the bird flu without understanding, again, the war on farmers, the 2024 election, and the massive power grab from the World Health Organization. This is Kaiser Johnson with Liberty and Finance, and these are the Miles Franklin Weekly Specials for June 10th through June 17th, 2024, while supplies last. First, we feature Ital Preziosi Silver Kilo Bars at just $1.79 over spot per ounce. We also have a highly limited supply of one tenth ounce Platinum Britannia at $59 over melt. To order our specials or any of the many other options we have available, call us at 1-888-81-LIBERTY. That's 1-888-815-4237. We're available after hours and on weekends, and we look forward to speaking with you. Welcome back to Liberty and Finance. We're glad to have this returning guest. Alex Newman is a founder of the Liberty Sentinel. He's also a senior editor at The New American. He joins us this Monday, June 10th, 2024. Alex, thanks for coming back on Liberty and Finance. Great to be here. Thank you for having me, Donegan. I'd like to title this interview that we're doing right now, You'll Own Nothing and Be Happy or Dead. And uh, related to the globalist plans that are being hatched for us, that we keep being told in little dribs and drabs about a very dire future that awaits us if we uh, don't toe the line and uh, get in line uh, behind the plans that are being made for us to take away our privacy, take away our freedoms, take away our individuality, take away our national sovereignty, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And specifically, we've seen story after story coming out and announcement after announcement about either weaponizing of the bird flu or weaponizing of Ebola, either one being potentially serious uh, concerns about the, the Ebola, 90% fatal disease being weaponized. And uh, yet at the same time, we're hearing uh, denials from officialdom about the uh, source, the official source of the last pandemic that we just went through as we're being told, but there's another one coming and this one will be a lot worse. So the last time they told us to watch out, uh, they were about to take over our lives and shut our lives down. And now we're being told it's going to be a lot more serious. It just in case it didn't get our attention last time. Can you talk to us about what we know about the actual uh, facts about what's going on in terms of preparing the next uh, potential pandemic and whether it's a bunch of smoke or whether it's actually serious and we need to be very concerned or if that's just part of the fear manipulation, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, let's start there with what we do know about what's actually going on. Well, thank you, Dan. Again, I've been warning for more than two years now that they were preparing to unleash a bird flu pandemic on us. Um, and and I, I didn't have any kind of crystal ball or any kind of special insight. They've been telling us that they were going to do this. In fact, the former head of the CDC, um, Robert uh, Redman, I believe his name is, uh, announced over two years ago. He was concerned that uh, the COVID was going to look minor by comparison with the coming bird flu that he said could kill as many as half of all Americans. Now, bird flu on its own is actually not that frightening. Uh, and I know the World Health Organization is claiming, uh, apparently falsely, the uh, misinformation that uh, the first human victim has now died from bird flu down in Mexico, although the Mexican health minister quickly came out and said that was fake news. The WHO is not telling the truth. They said this guy died actually from kidney failure and lung failure, not from bird flu. Um, now, bird flu by itself, again, is not all that concerning. Weaponized bird flu, which we know they've been working on in these uh, BSL-4 laboratories, not just in the United States, but in other countries as well, that is very, very dangerous, potentially at least, and even more dangerous when you remember what they did to us the last time around. They deprived us of legitimate medical treatments proven to work that we can't mention here to avoid getting you in trouble, and they forced us to endure uh, fake treatments that even the WHO said were likely to shut down your liver, shut down your kidneys, et cetera. I'm talking about things like remdesivir and things, uh, killed huge, huge, huge numbers of people. So um, I do think we should be concerned. As, as always, I think the government response is drastically more concerning than uh, any kind of pandemic, bird flu, Ebola, anything else. And you know, to touch on Ebola for a moment too, uh, Ebola, of course, is a very concerning pathogen, but on its own, 
it's not that concerning. When you weaponize it and make it much more contagious, make it easy to spread, then we're in a whole different ballgame. So they've been telling us they're going to do this for a long time. Uh, even uh, at the recent World Economic Forum, they talked about disease X that would be 20 times more deadly. Uh, and there's several key things happening in the background that I think are all directly related to this. Uh, the first is, of course, the coming 2024 election. Uh, the second is the WHO power grab, which is uh, hugely significant. They uh, are pretending like they had a minor defeat because they they weren't able to get agreement on the World um, Health Assembly on the uh, pandemic treaty or the pandemic accord, as they're calling it now, so they can try to not get it passed through the Senate, uh, ratified by the Senate in the U.S., but um, they did adopt the amendments to the international health regulations, so they're moving forward with that very, very, very concerning amendments. Um, and they have also promised to deliver a pandemic treaty, a pandemic accord, either by the end of this year or at the absolute latest by May of 2025. So those two threats. And then you and I have talked before about the war on farmers, Dunnigan. People need to be paying attention. This bird flu thing, you've already got a uh, People like Deborah Burks, who ought to be in prison, by the way, uh, telling us that we need to use PCR tests on every single cow every single week to find out if they've got bird flu. Um, this is, I believe, just like it was during the last one, a pretext to create a huge number of false positives and start instead of you know cranking up the hysteria on the tyranny side, although that'll certainly happen. This will be the perfect excuse to start killing enormous numbers of animals, chickens, ducks, uh, hens, whatever it is, and also now cows. And they've been telling us they want to get rid of cows for how long? Openly, right? Cows are bad for the planet, cow global warming, whatever. Uh, this will be the perfect excuse to exterminate enormous number of cows, totally decimate the beef and dairy industries, and force us into this nightmarish future of laboratory-created meat, uh, fake meat, chemicals, etc. So all these things, I, I don't think you can understand what they're doing with the bird flu without understanding, again, the war on farmers, the 2024 election, and the massive power grab from the World Health Organization. When you've talked to us about the, the war on farmers in the past, it's been baffling to most how any of this can be spun uh, to be good for the people of any country. We've had the uh, you could, you've told us before you've had Netherlands farmers having their having their lands taken away. You've have you've have uh, mysterious uh, explosions, fires, and things at numerous processing plants all across the U.S., etc. Any further insights into uh, the types of things that have been actually done to increase the pressure on our food supply? Uh, this has been going on for a very long time, Dunnigan. I first picked up on the trend back in 2012. Um, I used to live in South Africa, and so I, I have a, a special place in my heart for South Africa, which is not really a, a nation, by the way. It's a collection of nations all amalgamated together under this freakish communist regime. But um, you had the president of South Africa in 2012, Jacob Zuma, a polygamist uh, weirdo whose defense at a rape trial was her Congo was really short, uh, openly singing on stage in front of the military, bring me my machine gun, we're going to shoot all the boars. Now, boars are farmers. Right? Uh, Julius Malema, who was the head of the ANC Youth League, by the way, a genocidal maniac and a Marxist, openly singing. Uh, kill the boar, right? He actually got in trouble for singing the Kill the Boar song. He said, we're going to kill the farmer, kill the farmer, kill the boar, kill the farmer. Um, now, when he got in trouble, now he sings Kiss the Farmer, which everybody knows means kill the farmer. So 2012, you know, over a decade ago, why why, why would you want to kill the farmer? The farmer is the one who feeds you. Uh, and by the way, South African farmers are the, the Afrikaners. They are the most productive farmers in the world, man for man. They feed more people man for man than any other farmers on earth. Um, and yet, you have this incredible string of murders against these farmers. Estimates say there was about 30 or 40,000 commercial farmers in South Africa. Somewhere between three and 4,000 of them have already been slaughtered in the most barbaric ways imaginable. I mean, we're talking uh, torturing babies. We're talking about drilling holes in old women. Uh, we're talking about men forced to watch their wives being raped, things that are just unspeakable. Um, in a genocidal campaign of terror. Now, that was bad enough on its own. Marxist terrorists always do those kinds of things. Then uh, the next year, I saw in Brazil, the Brazilian government was cranking up the hysteria against all these agricultural communities and some of the most productive farmland in the world by claiming that at some point hundreds of years ago, Indians might have lived there or walked through there. Uh, so I did a big, a series of big stories on this for World Net Daily, for the New American Magazine. Um, it, again, I, I used to live in Brazil, got a lot of contacts down there. I started making phone calls. What's going on here? I called the government. They said, oh, this was Indian land. We got to give it back. Back to the Indians. Well, I called the Indians, the Zavanchi Indians, who were supposed to be getting this land back. And their chief said, no, no, that, that's not our land. We never lived there. We're uh, Indians of the Floresta, the jungle, not the Cejado, this kind of 
prairie area where the farms were. And yet the government, uh, militarized police wearing blue helmets, was going in there and literally holding these villagers at gunpoint, forcing them to dismantle their homes, loading it all up on trucks and clearing out entire agricultural villages. Just this one operation took almost half a million acres of the most productive farmland in the world out of production. And that was just the tip of the iceberg in Brazil. Then I started seeing it happen in other places. The communist Chinese government came out and said they were going to relocate 250 million peasant farmers off of their land into these giant, nasty, totally controlled, surveilled apartments that they had built for them in cities. And there it wasn't under the guise of Indians. It wasn't under the guise of racial justice or, or economic transformation. There it was under the guise of efficiency. And then we saw in the U.S., right? How could we forget the Bundy Ranch? There was over 50 cattle ranches in that area of Clark County in Nevada. By the time they finally got to removing the Bundy Ranch, they were the last cattle ranch standing. It was it all started by the way under the guise of saving a desert tortoise. Okay? So all these different excuses, then the Netherlands it was, you know, nitrogen, global warming, whatever, all over the world, different excuses, same end objective, remove independent farmers, ranchers, food producers from their land, centralized control of the agricultural system. And I could go on, there's many, many more examples, but it gives you a sense of what's happening here. It's not about racial justice. It's not about Indians. It's not about climate change. It's about destroying the food supply, transforming it, and having total centralized control over everything that everybody in the world eats. That's one of the most uh, clear emerging facets of any of these dystopic uh, initiatives that are being pushed on us uh, in the last several years is that if you look closely and think carefully, uh, think critically about the stated problem that's being presented or the stated solution that's being presented, it doesn't make any sense. It's like, if that's what the problem you're trying to solve, you could just solve it this way. You could solve it with existing technology. You, you, wouldn't, you could bring out existing, you know, repurposed drugs, or you could bring out, uh, educate farmers on how to, how to do better uh, uh, types of agriculture that preserve rainwater and, and, and build the soil and do things like that, that inc increase nutrition, increase yield per acre and that sort of thing. You don't have to take this other approach there there's it's clear that there's a common thread of centralization and uh usurpation of freedom that is that is uh, the real underlying theme behind all of these um in in particular these warnings about a coming uh new pandemic are are gravely concerning because this is what was used this fear tactic is what was used to manipulate and control the majority of the world's population and, and get them to take experimental treatments, et cetera. Um, can you uh, talk to us about ways that people can retain their, their if, if wellness, if public health and wellness is the real concern, how do we overcome that, our sense of equilibrium? And how do we overcome our, our tendency to fall into human uh, reptilian fear reactions and let people have their way with us and take away our freedoms uh, by playing on our fears and instead arm ourselves with the, the truth uh, about how to stay well, how to, how to interrelate in communities that are resilient, etc.? Well, there's a lot that could be said here. I would say start off by turning off your television and throwing it away. I mean, it, it's not even fake news anymore. It's not even misinformation. It is psychological terrorism masquerading as fake news. You need to turn it off. Um, I saw a hilarious meme the other day. It was a dad throwing a TV off the balcony. He said, I'm vaccinating my family against the next pandemic. Um, stop paying attention to the fake media. You, you will get nothing useful out of there except trying to figure out, you know, what does the enemy want me to believe is, I think, the best way to understand the, the ridiculous propaganda that's coming through there. Uh, you do want to take good care of your health, of course. And there are a lot of good ways to do it. Start by eating good food. Start by moving around a little bit. Go for a walk. Lift a couple of weights. Go for a jog. Um, you know, do some physical activity. Your body needs to move. Um, you know, get the right supplements. So one of the things that I did early on when I started hearing this hysteria about the bird flu was I went to the uh, frontline critical care COVID doctors, um, the uh, FLCCC, led by some really, really great doctors who I've interviewed many times. So what is their protocol for treating bird flu? And I made sure I had access to all of those medications. And uh, I encourage everybody to talk with their doctor. If you have a, a quack establishment hack that went along with the narrative last time, you might want to find a new doctor. But anyways, talk to your healthcare professional about what you may want to have on hand in the event of some kind of pandemic, whether it be a bird flu or anything else, and uh, make sure you have reasonable supplies for that. Um, prepare for the possibility of another lockdown, right? The totalitarians figured out how effective that was at destroying small businesses, destroying jobs, destroying churches, destroying families. Um, make sure you are prepared 
to not have to punch people at Walmart to get toilet paper if and when uh, something like that were to happen again. But most importantly, um, you know, lean on God. Do not be afraid. They, these people are counting on you being terrified so that you'll be willing to accept things that you would never accept otherwise so that you'll stop thinking critically about what's being said. Uh, so do not be afraid, period. Um, and, and I think the, the easiest way to do that is be in prayer, read your Bible, recognize that God's in control. Do not succumb to the fear porn and the propaganda that is being pumped out at you, because I guarantee you, if you fall for the fear, you will make bad decisions. And we saw it so clearly over the last few years. We must resist the temptation to be fearful. Um, you know, fear God, nothing else. You know, you're making a really uh, strong point here about avoiding uh, falling into the pit of unnecessary fear. And you can tell when there's fear mongering going. We saw that happen during the last four years where every channel, every major media channel, every hour of the day was putting out case statistics and death statistics and hospitalization statistics and everything and not talking about what works. What do we, how can we be resilient? How do we already know how to deal with this? How have we dealt with every other uh, you know flu that's come at us for the past forever and uh, what what are we learning about uh, things that we can do to to keep each ourselves safe and that sort of thing so uh also there's we may be in the calm before the storm between the the first wall and the second wall of the storm here and may have an opportunity to have access to some of those medications that were not allowed during that period of time i've i've seen advertisements come in the mail i've one of the mail order uh, pharmacies that we deal with uh, where we get low cost medications uh, is selling things over the counter you couldn't even get your doctor would have gotten in trouble for writing a prescription for and your pharmacist would have gotten in trouble for filming or for filling uh, before uh, that's available now over the counter so there are things available now. They're more plentiful now. Um, the supply chains are are less messed up now than they were then. So uh, it may be a perfect time to restock and replenish and reset. Uh, and as you mentioned, the, the the logical and mental calm that comes from just uh, breathing deeply and getting good exercise and thinking logically and critically about these things and talking with others. I would add. Um, when we're isolated, when it's just you and the and the mainstream TV screen, you're the most vulnerable. Uh, but when you're talking with others, it's remarkable how many people we've met from all over the world. When we start talking with them about these concerns, they have common they have common perceptions, common understanding, common gut instincts about what's really going on. And you realize, wait a minute, we're not alone. Uh, this is this is the majority of common people that that think this, this is common sense. And so to, to act based on your intuition, based on common sense, rather than on the fear propaganda, excellent, excellent advice. Uh, Alex, on that regards, if people want to follow your writings and the writings of those that you uh, look to as well, uh, where should they get connected in? Uh, well, I appreciate it, Dunnigan, and I echo everything you just said. And, and the, the point about talking to others, getting in community cannot be overemphasized. If you don't have a network of people around you that you know, that you trust, whether it be through a church or a homeschool co-op or a neighborhood, watch, whatever it is, uh, get working on that right now because that can make all the difference in the world. Get to know your local officials. Get to know your neighbors. Right, Go knock on the door. Bring them some cookies. Bring them some brownies. You know, Whatever it is, uh, just get those relationships in place right now. And to your point, people all over the world that recognize it. I, I just got back from the uh, the Caribbean and I'm talking to like taxi drivers and they're like, oh yeah, they're, they're trying to kill us. Like, I mean, People know this stuff, but if you just sit at home and watch your TV, they want you to think that you, know, you and your wife are the only ones on the planet who recognize this whole thing is a fraud. Don't fall for it. Get to in conversation, get in community with other people. Um, easiest way to follow me, uh, my website is libertysentinel.org. Sentinel is S-E-N-T-I-N-E-L, libertysentinel.org. Uh, you can also get our free daily headlines from thenewamerican.com. Keep you up to speed on all of the latest. And of course, uh, I, I recommend uh, if people want to make sure they're getting access to good information without online censorship from the big tech companies, you can get uh, the print magazine, comes out twice a month. Um, really, really good information there. And uh, thanks again for having me, Dunnigan. Always a pleasure. This is Kaiser Johnson with Liberty and Finance, and these are the Miles Franklin Weekly Specials for June 10th through June 17th, 2024, while supplies last. First, we feature Ital Preziosi Silver Kilo Bars at just $1.79 over spot per ounce. We also have a highly limited supply of 1 10th ounce Platinum Britannia at $59 over melt. To order our specials or any of the many other options we have available, call us at 1-888-81-LIBERTY. 
That's 1-888-815-4237. We're available after hours and on weekends, and we look forward to speaking with you.